So in this video, I want to make a tutorial on how to align a scan to the world coordinate system in Control X. So many times when you are bringing in scan data, you'll notice it's floating off in, in Never Never Land. Honestly, it's, it's floating in Never Never Land because it's oriented to the scanner most of the time, right? But um, that doesn't affect most people with the majority of workflows because you import a CAD and the CAD object is aligned to the world and then you are going to align the scan to it. But there are a few workflows where you might want to uh, set a scan as the reference and then take it and align other scans to it and run uh, measurements from there. So today what I'm going to do is just uh, demonstrate exactly what we were talking about. So if I just drag in a uh, scan here, you'll notice that it is floating in space. Here's where zero is. And if I want to align that together, um, the first thing that I do here is you'll notice that when I drag it in, it goes into the result. This is an inspection, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and just delete it out of that inspection, but it's not gone from the document itself because if you come over to input data, this is kind of like a, a container for data to come inside of the software. And if you come into the input data and select that scan, um, now what you can do is kind of like pre-align this before you send it over to the inspection project. So in order to do that, in order to do the alignment, we are going to come over to the measured data and you'll see this uh, tool called transform measured data. And um, that is going to be the option that we're going to use to move the scan data to a coordinate system. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and create features on that uh, scan data first so we can go in and select those features and align it. So in order to create those features, we're going to come over to the Home tab and you'll see here that we have these uh, features that we can create. So I'm just going to select areas of the model. So we'll just select that top surface here and then you can actually even create regions out of these as well so if you want to you can say I want to create a region and then if we just click on the side here create a region and sometimes this can be better because then you just select those regions to create features if you want to from there. And then if you're going to do a inspection where the scan is the reference, while you're in here, instead of just creating regions for all uh, only the features you're going to use for alignment, I would create regions for all of the features that I'm going to measure to and from as well. Um, so that would mean just coming in and saying, hey, let's create here for the sphere for the cylinder here and if you hold shift import so i'm not going to do all of those but i just wanted to make note of that that i would create the rest of them when i'm in here and then now when you get done you can jump over and create your features. This is just my way of doing it, by the way. There are other ways of going about doing this. So I come over here and I can say plane. And I'll just switch my selection tool and I'll say I want to create a plane with that there. Actually, let's do the deselect that one, create the plane on that top there first. So you see that I created my three planes. Now I can come over to measure, transform data, and just hit next because we're going to move scan A here. 
And then what we're going to do is, so there's all these different options here. You can load up a matrix, you can do data match, you can even scale in here. Um, I will come over to interactive alignment, which if you've ever used DX, that is the tool that we use to align scan data to the world, is we use this concept of interactive alignment. Now when you're in here, you do have the option to do a plain line point where uh, you would say, I want to select a plane and then the intersection of two planes to create a line and then a point, right? Uh, a three, two, one. Um, but I tend to just like to use XYZ. XYZ can do that as well as more. So I kind of default using XYZ. And the way I like to describe XYZ is you constrain the position separately from the three degrees of rotation. So you constrain the position all at once. And then the uh, rotation degrees, you can separate those out. And at first people are like, wait a second how what, what do you mean here so let me just show you i think it makes more sense if i just show you if i select for position i select all three of these planes and you'll see it will automatically intersect all those three planes to create a position an origin now zero is there we just put zero at the intersection of those three planes but you see that the rotation is not correct yet so that's where you can say i want the y-axis to be constrained to this plane and then whatever other planes you want to use so maybe the z-axis constrained to this plane so now you see that it's squared up y up and z at me here and then you hit ok and you hit rebuild because the planes will then go along with the scan. Um, so now, just to test it out, you can say, you can hit your views here, and then you can see that the origin is there at the intersection of those three planes there. So now that we have this aligned, when I grab the scan data, and I can right click and I can say, add to result data number one, result number one, you'll see that it comes in in the, the coordinate system there. So it comes in right. Um, now, when I created those features, just keep in mind that there are a whole host of ways of creating features over here. Um, if you come back over to this home tab here, select this. When you go into plane, we have the ability to create a mirror plane down the middle, all of these different offsetting. You can construct uh, extreme position where you best fit to the highest points. You can create um, a plane from probe points, uh, averaging two planes together. Uh, just keep in mind, I did the most basic option here where I just best fit here, here, and here, and then create an alignment. But I just wanted to point out that those other options are there for your alignment. Um, so now, just as a little quick, if I grab in, I just pull in another scan, you'll see here, here's another scan, and this is my, uh, I'm going to say scan A, move to reference, and scan B is now my, right here. Now, if I come in here and say initial alignment, this is how you would do a, a scan to scan uh, inspection um, from here on out. These just just little things that I would do. So if you want to turn that off, you can come over to dimension here. And because I created a region for this, you know, I can come over here to say radial dimension and it will automatically just act like a CAD face in a way, except for the nominal is going to be different, right? Um, so I would have to key in a nominal there. Actually, I just keyed in something crazy there. But um, you can measure to and from regions that are existing, right? So that's the idea here. Uh, here's a better example. If I say I want to measure the angle between here and there, they just act like regions now. So th the point of this video, honestly, was just to show how to align a scan to the world coordinate system before you do anything else. But I just wanted to tie that in with how I would then do a scan um, 
inspection from there. I hope this helps. Um, this is a tutorial about aligning a scan to the world coordinate system in Control-X.